Must draft running backs. It's redraft season, baby. Let's jump in. Have some fun. Join us, shall you? Welcome in. Like I said, today we're going to be discussing some of our must draft running backs for 2022. Joined with me back on the show is Robbie. Happy to have you. Cody is on vacation or doing something. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Anyways, let's jump right into it. Let's let's start this thing off, right? Give the people what they want. Robbie, listen, I applaud you for the first guy you're going to have on this list. I am a big fan. Who's your who's your first must draft running back for 2022? Oh man, I hope I'm going in order that you think I'm going in. I think I am. First guy is DeAndre Swift. He's a must draft running back for you guys this year. We know the talent's there, right? Coming out of Georgia's second round pick. And now he gets an offense that has a couple more weapons around him and TJ Hawkinson. We knew they were going to go out and get some wide receivers. uh, And they did in Jamison Williams. They did in in DJ Chark and some of these other guys. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown emerging last year. And so if this guy can stay healthy, I think we have an Alvin Kamara like Austin Eckler like player um, because he was number one in yards per touch created according to player profile last year. Uh, on the flip side, they just didn't have an offense around him that could support him. I mean, they were in negative game scripts. He was the 29th player uh, for negative game sp- script at his position, and he had even worse offensive line run blocking down there at 64th. And, and so if we have a bad offense, bad run blocking, but he still is able to be you know, a running back one in the top six running back, that's fantastic. But now you look at his ADP, he's going – as, as running back 10. And so I think with more improved uh, offense, you're going to have more red zone opportunities. Uh, I think he's going to take that next step and start to score a little bit more. I don't know if we're going to have the same type of, of split with him and Jamal Williams or Craig Reynolds. I think he's going to start to become that back that gets 180, 190, maybe even 200 carries. We've seen other people project him at that 200 carry mark. Um, so I, I definitely think that that um, is in his cards. And so if you're telling me you get uh, a running back in the second round that has top five, top six um, running back upside, that's absolutely a, a, a swing I'm going to take, right? He was only outside top 21 running back scoring in only two weeks of the 10 weeks that he played before his injury, right? So he was a running back one in five of the 10 games. So half his game is a running back one and only two games is he outside where he's really not usable, right? He's, he's past the flex level. So you really safe floor, um, and that's what you want in a running back. And so I absolutely think he can be that next Alvin Kamara, Austin Eckler. He was basically there last year, and let's just bump up his carries a little bit more. And I think he's there. And him going in the second round as running back 10, that's about that's an absolute value for me. Couldn't agree more. I absolutely love uh, DeAndre Swift. I was a top five running back this year. So I am all about DeAndre Swift. I think people are a little bit too low on him. Some of it's because of the injury, and some of it's because of, you know, it's still perceived to being the Lions. So I uh, absolutely love that. Let me jump over to my guy. And the, Listen, it's Joe Mixon, and this is one's very easy for me. And I don't under, kind of understand his, his current ADP. Underdog is going at 112. In terms of Fantasy Pros ADP, their consensus ADP is going off the board at RB9 in PPR formats. And I just don't really understand that. I have him at RB3 right now. He's a, Here's a guy that had 18.3 carries per game, three targets per game. He was fifth in red zone touches with 13, and also had 13 goal line carries, 1,500 total yards, and 16 touchdowns, which was good for uh, 18 fantasy points per game. He also, 11 of his 16 games played last year were RB1 weeks. And then he also saw five or more targets in five of his last six games. So we started to see them utilize him more as a pass catcher as well down the stretch. And, you know, listen, this offensive line last year was awful, just terrible, booty, right? But now they went out and added Leo Collins, Alex Kappa, and Ted Karras through free agency. So I love Joe Mixon this year, and I think he's a, a, a screaming value. This offense is only going to be more explosive. Another year with Joe Burrow, with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. And so I, I just think, and I think he could actually be a little bit more involved. Maybe he takes that kind of next step as a pass catcher, you know, kind of similar to what we saw with like uh, Leonard Fournette, because the guy is definitely capable of being more, more involved as a pass catcher. But one, this offensive line has always been terrible. And I think that is going to be a big, big time upgrade for him being in an offense now with an actual legit offensive line. You know, uh, Joe Burrow is not going to be running for his life anymore, uh, you know, who was sacked uh, an incredible amount last year. So I absolutely love Joe Mixon. I don't understand uh, why he's going as low as he is for somebody that has as high of a ceiling as he does and somebody that that you're locked in that's going to get 18 to 20 carries every single game that can get you five to six targets every single game there's just not a lot of running backs that fit that mold 
and I'm I'm buying all the Joe Mixon. Hey, you can't find any arguments from me. Big Joe Mixon fan. Love to see him finally hit that threshold that we know he's been able to hit. It just hasn't quite worked out to, for him until this last year. Absolutely in on that. Uh, if we're talking about great running backs from that 2017 class in a great offense, find me another player that gets double-digit touchdowns, gets six targets per game, and has averaged 4.5 rushing yards last year. Uh, that's Leonard Fournette. So I'm going to go right back to kind of the similar well that you're going to. He's going at the end of the second round, start of the third round right now. And you and I have talked about this. We think that's just going to grow. He's, he's going to uh, not be there come August, come September when you guys are doing your fantasy drafts. And, and so he was on track to surpass his career high in uh, receptions or in targets this last year. He remember the year where he had 100 targets with Jacksonville. He was on pace for 102 this year. He's getting six per game. That's fantastic. Uh, he's not splitting with Ronald Jones anymore, right? Ronald Jones goes to Kansas City. So he was getting about 13, 14 carries a game. Sometimes it was a Ronald Jones game. Sometimes it was a him game. Now we have uh, Rashad White, Keyshawn Vaughn, Gio Bernard. I'm not worried about any of those guys. And I know we had uh, some love for some of them, but this is going to be Leonard Fournette's backfield. Tom Brady is the one that trusts him. He trusts him to block for him. He trusts him to pass catch for him and the ability to get four yards if he's called upon, right? Like that's Leonard Fournette's game. He's a bruiser that's going to get that yardage when you're behind a good offensive line. And when you have Tom Brady as your quarterback, why not, right? The touchdown upside's there. We know the uh, receiving upside is up is there as well. And now we need to talk a little bit about Chris Godwin and his um, getting back to health, right? I don't know if he's going to be um, either completely healthy or even on the field week one, right? So where did some of those targets go to if Antonio Brown's not there? Mike Evans is going to get what he gets. Russell Gage going to be mixing in. It, it's probably going to go to the running back. We see that a lot when there's a vacated target from wide receiver. They turn into running back targets. So can those six targets actually increase? I think there's that possibility. So Burnett has everything you want in a back. He has talent, good offense, good offensive line, not a lot of really good competition. He's got the passing down work. He's got the red zone work. And he finishes running back four in 2021. So why the hell is he going outside of the top six back? He's going at running at, as running back 12. This is uh, insane ADP right now. And so if you're drafting now for some reason, I know we're probably not. We're just doing mocks and talking ADP. But this is a great, great value right now. He's a must draft. I absolutely agree. I mean, the, the only concerns I guess I was going to play devil's advocate was Giovanni Bernard was hurt for a lot of last year, who was kind of brought in to be the pass catching running back. So maybe he mixes in and get some more opportunity. Rashad White is also somebody that is a tremendous pass catcher out of the backfield. So we'll and they utilize a third round pick on him. So we'll see how kind of he mixes in. But we've also seen them use third round pick on other running backs, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, and never really do much with them either. So we'll see on that. But yes, all everything aligns for him to be the man again this year. And the only other concern would be his age. He is getting up there. He is 27 years old. These get slotted, but that is in, you can make that case for a lot of these running backs, you know, in, in this range that are going here. I mean, the Dalvin Cooks, the Derrick Henrys. I mean, so many of these guys, Ezekiel Elliott, Alan Kamara, I mean, all of these guys are getting up there in age. And, you know, I don't think we can project for all of them are going to just fall off a cliff. Uh, some of these guys are still going to be good. And, you know, there's nothing really pointing that Leonard Fournette is falling off. So I like that pick as well. The next guy I'm going to go I'm gonna go to is going to be a little bit more controversial for some people. Uh, some people absolutely hate this, uh, this guy, and the other people, some other people are uh, still on board. And that is Saquon Barkley. I am still – on on board with Saquon Barkley. And the best thing about him is you're actually now getting him at a value. Coming off the board at RB16, he's going almost in the third round. And so, you know, before he was a guy we were drafting as a top five pick. It's just no longer the case. And listen, some people just have to realize, one, he was coming off an ACL and an MCL tear last year. And it wasn't like he, it happened like in preseason or anything like that. I mean, it happened during the season. So by the time he came back, he was less than a year removed. We know that, you know, year two was much better for running back. They they tend to bounce back in year two, and so listen. I, I think I think I think the sky's the limit for Saquon Barkley this year. And now you're getting him at, a, at an incredible value. Then everything is different now. Like Joe Judge is gone, thank goodness. Brian Dable has now you know taken over as the head coach. I, I think we can expect good things from him. We saw a lot what he was able to do in Buffalo, kind of turn around that offense and really make that one of the best offenses in the league. And then you know they've had a massive upgrades on their offensive line. Their offensive line has just been terrible the past four or five years, especially while Saquon. Barkley has been there, adding Evan Neal, who's their seventh overall 
pick in the first round. Uh, Matt Glowinski and John Feliciano have all been added to this offensive line. And so this offensive line projects to be much better. I don't think it's going to be like a top 10 unit, but I think it can definitely take a step forward. Andrew Thomas take another step forward from where he was last year. He improved as well. But I still think you could be looking at a top 15 to 18 type unit, which is still dramatically better than the, the 31st or 32nd unit that they had last year. So all of those things considered. And here's the thing that nobody's talking about. There's nobody behind them. Like, there's nobody. It's Matt Breida, Gary Brightwell, Antonio Williams, and Ja'Shawn Corbin are the running backs that are going uh, that are that are on that depth chart. There's nobody else. Like, he is going to get so much work in this offense, and this offense should be so much a lot better than what we've seen in years past. Yeah, and I think we could see a, a, a move forward for Daniel Jones, a better year for Daniel Jones. I don't think Daniel Jones can all of a sudden be a baller, but he should be better than what he was. They're going to be put in better situations with Brian Dable calling the shots, calling the offense here so there's just I, I i don't understand the kind of disconnect i know people are still so worried about oh he's injury prone he's injury prone yes he missed some time last year but it was a freak accident that he absolutely stepped on somebody rolled his ankle missed a couple of weeks but other than that he played the entire year like he wasn't somebody that was hurt and listen every running back gets hurt well i think it was like two or three running backs actually played all 17 games last year so we got to start start removing some of this oh well he's he's gonna get hurt Every running back gets hurt. Every running back misses time. Almost every one of them, right? Some more severe than others, but so so is Saquon. He's still only 25 years old. I still think he has something left in the tank. And it's going to be a screaming value to get him in the third round for somebody that has top five, even R, the RB1 upside. We've seen it before. I'm not projecting that. I'm not saying he's going to be the RB1, but I definitely think – just being an RB one is well within the range of his, his outcomes. Yeah, I hate uh, agreeing with you so much. We're not we're not used to this, but I think two points to add to what you said is that sometimes we overestimate a player's ability, right? Like we thought Saquon Barkley is like Superman. He's like Adrian Peterson, where he's going to come back from the ACL and he's going to dominate. Most running backs don't come back right away from an ACL because he was the ACL and MCL. We shouldn't have expected him to dominate in a bad offensive line, a bad offensive system where they don't throw to their running backs, right? Like Jason Garrett doesn't throw to their running backs. That's why we didn't like Zeke as that pass catching back until it became Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator. So we had all of those things working against him. He, he can't overcome all that, right? But now you're a year removed from the injury. And I think one other thing is that there's other weapons around there where it's not just all him, right? Like it was Mike Glennon throwing to Kadarius Tony for a game. And then it was, didn't they have Corey Coleman starting for like some of those games? Like they had nobody. They had backup quarterbacks, backup tight ends, backup wide receivers. It was just a disaster. And I'm not going to blame all that on Saquon. So let's stop agreeing because this is where we work best. This is where I've got Zeke Elliott, my guy that I've been pounding the table for at this value going as running back 20, running back 20. You can get a, what I think is a top 12, top 13 running back um, who's finished like that every single year in the third round. This is just the values. I think even detractors from Zeke's games should say that this is a value where you should probably be interested in him, right? So he finishes as running back seven. If you go by points per game, running back 13, which I think is much more important. So he's right outside of that range. And that's with a partially torn PCL starting in week four. So we look, uh, I'll do a little bit of uh, splits pre-injury to post-injury. He's 5.3 yards per game pre-injury. He's 7.5 yards per reception, and he's running back six in points per game. Post-injury, he's 3.8 yards per game, 5.8 yards per reception, and he's off the map in, in terms of fantasy points per game. They started splitting touches. They started taking him off the field, right? Um, he played four games uh, pre-injury, 13 games afterwards. He had 85 yards per game in the in the games before his injury, only 50 in the games after. So I think there's absolutely no reason we should expect him to play like he did after his injury. We should be looking at his numbers pre-injury and, and earlier last year before uh, Dak got hurt. And so if we're looking at that, we should be looking at probably a top 12 running back with top six upside. Now we know Tony Pollard's going to work in there, so we're not going to project him to get the 260, 270 carries, and I'm not expecting that. I just think the efficiency is going to be much better. I think he's going to be more in that 4.5 yards per carry range, and I think his receiving uh, uh, efficiency is going to go up as well. If you can get him as running back 20 in the third round and he has running back in, in the running back one upside, I think that's something that we need to take in consideration. He's a must draft for me. <laughs> you're, you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. 
Was that, we don't we don't have time to say and go along debate. We definitely need to do a throw down on this. But, but this is all I'll say is one. I think his ADP definitely rises from there. I think he does get much closer to the top 13, 14, 15, somewhere in that range. Correct. And I just can't mess with him at that at, at that point. We he is another year. He's another year older. He has been ridden hard and put back wet in this offense. I, I still Tony Pollard is definitely the better running back here in this backfield. I don't think it's a hot take. He is definitely the more efficient running back. We've seen it now for the past two seasons. Every metric aligns uh, with, with that. Being with that being the case now again the same thing i've said do i think that they're just going to turn over the backfield with tony pollard no it, it, zico is still going to get the carries in this backfield however you know my argument's always been just take the cheaper guy who has a much higher ceiling like if something happened to zico Lely, tony pollard is a locked in rb1 like locked in every single week i i have no doubts about it but whereas Right now, with Zeke, like I, I don't I, like I, he just isn't somebody who moves the needle for me. He's not going to win you a league. He, he has a very limited ceiling, in my opinion. Sure, maybe he has the one percent out range of outcome or something happens, but his win rate the last three or four years has been terrible. He hasn't been somebody that's won people leagues. He's just kind of been a guy that's out there. You know, he, he's kind of consistent or whatever. But you know, yes, if you if you can get him in like the late third round, I guess that's a little bit better, just because you know you feel a little bit more better about him at least in terms of the the weekly uh, floor that he's going to provide, but there's not much ceiling there. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a home run. And I just don't think he's much of a home run. And I'm definitely not going to believe it at the age of 27 years old. So that's just why I'm just not as high on Ezekiel Elliott. If he ends up going say around the same range in the third round, fine. If you want to take him there, but he's just not somebody I'm going on my way to draft. Let's wrap this thing up a little bit. I, you know, I kind of went back and forth on who I really wanted to talk about here. So I'm going to hit on two guys really quickly, give a little bonus. Uh, One is David Montgomery, you know, for, for a player last year who finishes RB 19, but only played in 13 games, had 225 carries last year, 42 receptions on 51 targets last year. And listen, Tariq Cohen again is hurt is out for the year tour, you know, again, you know, sad to see it, you know, another seasoning injury for him. But there's just not going to be anybody here in his way to take to take touches away. Like, yes, I, I think Khalil Herbert could have somewhat of a role, but it's not going to be anything that 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 takes away tremendously from David Montgomery. Somebody from last year who was second in snap share, fourth in opportunity share in this backfield. Now, listen, he's not an he's not an efficient guy. He was 42nd in yards created per touch. You know, there's nothing exciting about that. 37th in breakaway run rate, like you know, 31st in juke rate. Like he that's not his game. 61st in two yards per carry as well. But the volume is definitely going to be there for him. And, you know, I think we could see him get even more opportunity as, as you know, in terms of pass catching uh, op- opportunities as well. He had a 12% target share, which is 12th most among all running backs. So he's somebody that I think could actually be utilized more as a pass catcher than what we, you know, than what he's been utilized a little bit more in the past. So listen, I'm not saying that it's going to be like he's a slam dunk, like, you know, top five running back, but where you could get him, where he is currently being drafted, I think there, you know, there's definitely a case we made uh, 35th overall rb18 right now for him and so listen again another kind of late third round guy and then once you kind of get past him it's kind of in some choppy waters there's a few more running backs past him but you're kind of entering that that rb dead zone you know once you kind of get past him so you know if you're depending on how your draft plays out like getting somebody like david montgomery who who possesses you know somebody that could probably have 13 1400 total yards 10 plus touchdowns you know it's hard to find that in other places and somebody that's going to be as evolved as a pass catcher as he is so um you know and there's nobody else really there it's darnell mooney who we'll talk about in Cole Komet. So there, there's definitely opportunity there for David Montgomery as a pass catcher. So um, let, the last guy I did want to hit on is Travis Etienne. I really don't understand his current ADP right now. RB 26, 60th overall. It just doesn't make any sense. I get he's coming off an injury, Liz Frank injury, but it happened early in preseason. He has been running, you know, really all, all off season. I think he is at 100% going to be good to go. We obviously know the connection between him and, Tre- uh, and Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, I think a lot of people just kind of forgot and how good you know uh Travis Etienne was coming out and so like for me right now yes he's still on the Jaguars the Jaguars have also improved that offensive line adding Brandon Sheriff is, is a big upgrade for that offensive line and their offensive line was low-key not bad last year either so I do like uh Travis Etienne if you're going to be able to get him in the fifth or sixth round like I'm going to be all about that live because he he has serious are like high-end RB2 upside in my opinion James Robinson tore his Achilles uh, hate to see that. I am a big James Robinson guy, but you know, unless James Robinson has a Cam Akers type, you know, type, uh, you know, recovery time, which that is not something we should be uh, counting on. Yeah, yes, Cam, Cam Akers came back much earlier than we thought, but also, also in case Cam Akers didn't look as good once he came back. But 
uh, with that being said, you know, I, I think Travis Etienne is being majorly undervalued right now. Somebody that is a tremendous pass catcher out of the backfield. Somebody that can be an absolute weapon for this offense. Urban Meyer is gone. Thank goodness. Doug Peterson knows how to utilize running backs out of the backfield as well. So I think there's a lot of good things going for Travis Etienne. I have him going right. I have him ranked right now at RB 19. And uh, he, so I am, I'm well above consensus on Travis Etienne. So let's change that because Travis Etienne should not be going that late. If he is, he's an absolute steal. And I'll, I will be hitting that draft button every single time if I can get him in the fifth or sixth round of drafts. That is the list. That is the much draft running backs, uh, you know, as of right now. Obviously, as we get more information, training camp starts next month. We're not that far away, boys and girls. We are getting closer and closer to the football season returning. So as we get closer, more news, we'll probably we'll probably freshen this up, update this a little bit with some new ADP and stuff like that. But appreciate everybody checking out. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We will catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>